Hey everyone, welcome back to my random 603. We're back in the garage today after spending a couple of days cleaning up and pushing everything off to the sides so we have some more room to work on projects. Speaking of projects, here's the first one, a 2000 Mitsubishi Mini Cab pickup truck. The Mitsubishi Mini Cab is a K truck imported from Japan. A K truck is classified as a vehicle that is 660 cc's or lower. This particular model is a 4x4 pickup truck that also has fold down bedsides in the back and I'm going to be using this as my shop truck. Being a shop truck, this has already gotten a little bit of abuse so we need to do some maintenance work before we start with any of the fun customization projects. On the list are going to be replacing this passenger side mirror. Yes, the left side is the passenger side on this vehicle. The driver's side door handle, as well as doing the front brakes and a full tune up. That task list is long enough as it is, so let's not waste any of our time and jump right into it. Our first project on the list is to get this passenger side mirror replaced. But before we get started, I wanted to let you know one of the fun facts of owning an imported car from Japan that doesn't exist in America. That fact is trying to find parts. In order to get this mirror, I actually had to search for it for about a month and then wait about a month to get it imported from Japan. As you can see, this color and this color are two different ones. This isn't painted and I'm not going to paint it white right now because one of our projects down the line is to actually paint this truck a really cool color that's a surprise for another episode. All right, let's jump in and get this mirror squared away. Start with our easiest task first and we'll work our way up. First thing we're gonna to need to do is take off this plastic cover. Um, there should be some screws under there, I'm guessing, so that we can take off this mirror. Underneath here, it looks like there's a little gap where we could stick a flathead screwdriver. Peel that out. And just as expected, we have uh, three Phillips screws underneath here. these three screws out. Should be able to get everything out of there. And there is a uh, couple of guide tabs on the back of this. All right, with the old mirror off, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, grab the dirty shop rag just to wipe down some of this, uh, this dust and dirt in here. I'm not gonna go too crazy, only because these are coming right off uh, to paint the truck soon. We're gonna grab our replacement mirror, make sure our, line, our tabs line up. For some reason, there isn't a tab on this bottom one, uh, an insert rather, and it is not on the old mirror either. All right, all of these uh, screws that came out are the same length. Be careful not to cross thread anything. Get everything started. And then we'll snug them up. Everything seems to be on there nice and good. All right, and everything is done except for getting this uh, replacement cover back in here. There we go, it doesn't fit quite as well as the factory one, but it'll pass inspection, so that's great. 
Okay, for our next task, we're gonna go ahead and replace this driver's side door handle on the Mitsubishi. This was the same type of project. I had to research on the web what the part number was, find it, and the, the key to it was using the model number of the truck, the U62T uh, code. That allowed me to find parts specifically for this generation of Mitsubishi Mini Cab. Same process though, had to hunt around, we found a part supplier over in Japan, found the correct part, ordered it, and just had to wait for it to come in. So now that we have it, we're gonna go ahead and uh, replace this door handle by removing a lot of the interior pieces, and I'll cut to that so that you can watch me. Okay, a quick overview of what we're gonna need to take off this door panel. Just some simple hand tools. Phillips screwdrivers. Uh, typically to remove a manual window crank, you can use a towel or a rag. Unfortunately, in this setup here, the clip is mounted so far back, it makes it almost impossible uh, to use the rag trick. And if you're unfamiliar with that, Instead of using a door trim tool, you come in behind it and you use a seesaw. Uh, and I'll actually get behind the door here so you can see better. But traditionally, you could come back here with a rag and just work yourself back and forth. And eventually, this clip is going to come off. But because this has this, like, it's a quarter inch, like, extension, it makes it super hard to get off on these. So instead, if you just grab two pry tools, opposing sides, you can pop it right off. And you can see inside the clip is mounted super far back over here. And like I said, normally you could use the, the, uh, the rag trick. And now looking at this, if you had a pick, uh, you could probably get it off with a pick too. With the window crank out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and remove uh, the speaker off of the bottom. And these are, right now I'm running ARC Audio uh, separates. This mesh basket pops right out. And You probably won't have this <laughs> on your mini truck because I think they came, uh, if I remember, it was like one speaker in the dash on these. Uh, the system in this is a little overkill. Okay, now that we have the speaker removed and the window handle removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the door pull and then this trim over here and I'll try to do this in reverse uh, so my big head isn't in the way. So this is just two Phillips over here. Over here, there should be one Phillips screwdriver, uh, screw.
This is one of those, the trim, it's the screw, but it also has the tabs in the back that slide in. Now we should be able to go around the door and start to remove uh, all of the mounting points where they're just uh, plastic clips. And yes, I know I should be using trim tools, but I did not get a chance to go to Harbor Freight and pick some up. I do not know where my old set went. So we have that door panel off now and we have access to the door handle which will be on the uh, other side of this and you can see that uh, things got slightly overkill with the sound deadening and then just slap a set of speakers in here. going to put the window up and uh, if you could see inside uh, you would see that uh, the sound deadening <laughs> is totally overkill. Um, so inside here for the door handle itself it looks like I have a couple of 10 millimeters and I'm just gonna, just gonna adjust the camera so you guys get a better view. With the camera readjusted, you can see that we have one 10 millimeter that's gonna be easy to get to. The other one is behind this window track. So that one might be a little tricky. We're gonna get that one first. And then you can see, I think you can see over here, we, we had some neighbors move in, uh, courtesy of this little hole in here when the door handle broke. So first things first, let's get rid of those guys. Um, nobody's, nobody's here, so we're just evicting the nest. With the nest out of the way, our next step is to figure out how we're gonna get that nut off that's in the back of the window track. If you trace the window track down, there's actually another 10 millimeter right here that should release this window track and allow us to get uh, better access. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take this nut off and hold on to that window track. All right. put this aside and now we should have room to remove both of these up top all right now that we have better access we should be able to just Come in here, start loosening things up. There we 
one out. And now the second one. And that door, well, what's left of that door handle is. It's free to go. In order to get our new handle in, we need to remove this. This is just the broken piece of the door handle and then the clip. This uh, is just a friction clip on both sides. So we shouldn't have to take any of this hardware off. Uh, just figure out how to get this plastic clip off. All right, a little bit of uh, a little bit of trouble there. Um, it looks like the this was actually a uh, clip in here, so I needed to go in with a flathead to get that out. With the old door handle finally removed, we're going to go ahead and. Install our new one. Place these two 10 millimeters. We're going to take that prop rod, just get it in position. You come over the top with that clip, make sure it locks into place. And our door handle has officially been replaced, so I don't have to roll down, remember to roll down my window um, wherever I go. Thanks to a little studio magic, we have uh, everything back in place and ready to go. And just so you can see, we have our shiny new door handle. So I can get in and out of the driver's side of my uh, mini truck now. So far we've taken care of the passenger side mirror and we nailed out that driver's side door handle so we can get in and out of the driver's side without leaving the window roll down or reaching over the passenger side. At this point in the game, what we're going to do is start working on this tune-up. I'd like to do an oil change uh, with a fresh filter, air filter, and spark plugs. This is a fuel injected uh, engine with coil packs directly over the spark plugs. We'll have to get those coil packs out of the way. Where this is a mini cab, it's actually a cab over engine design. The cab doesn't tilt forward, so we need to gain access to the engine through the passenger side seat. So we're gonna flip open this little uh, flap of fabric. There's a couple latches. And with the seat out of the way, you can see we now have access to our air filter, coil packs. Again, this is a three cylinder and then our oil fill location. So let's get started by taking, uh, taking out of the way the air filter. As you can see, this one's relatively new. Um, so I guess we'll leave this one in here. I've already replaced this uh, when I very first got the truck. I just thought after a winter, it would be much worse than it is. For those of you interested, on the U62T, this is the model number air filter you're looking for. It'll also fit the uh, U42 models as well.
Moving right along, we're going to want to gain access to the spark plugs. So we're going to take this PCV valve out. Now we have access to these coil packs. We're going to disconnect them. Being careful because this is old wiring. Uh, you don't want to break any wires or connectors. Now we should have easy access to these coil packs. They're a 10 millimeter and they should come out relatively easily. And next up, we're actually going to uh, replace these spark plugs. Spark plugs, pretty simple process. I'm just using a 3 8 ratchet, an extension, and in my case, I actually bought the 16 millimeter spark plug tool and <laughs> imported that when I did the uh, NGK spark plugs. These look like they've been replaced before and they don't look like they're in bad shape, but we're still gonna put in a fresh set. Again, this vehicle only has just over 20,000 miles, so I don't expect things to be too bad, but at the same time, I don't know who had this before me in Japan, so it makes sense for me to try to go through the maintenance items as much as possible. The plugs are an NGK, and here's the model number in case you have a Mitsubishi minicab of your own using the, the same engine. At least you have that part number handy. These have already been gapped, so all we have to do is install them. I suppose for this, you could easily just use a 16 millimeter uh, deep wall socket and then use a piece of rubber hose. I don't think that it'd be necessary to order this uh, special spark plug socket. Um, but then again, if you wanted to, like I did, go right ahead. Once these are finger tight, I'm gonna follow back up and just make sure that they're snug not too tight at all. We're gonna replace everything in reverse. Coming back in with our coil packs. And these coil packs are actually readily available now. Uh, I even found them on eBay too. Now we can get these coil packs plugged right back in. You should hear them click once the tab is seated properly. All right, for our next step, we're gonna go down below and I'll show you where the oil fill is, just so you have an idea. All right, we're underneath the driver's side now, where we're going to uh, take a 17 millimeter, let all the oil out, and then we're gonna replace that oil filter up there. While we give the oil a minute to drain, I'll throw this up on the screen. And this is just the part number for the oil filter.
Hey everyone. I want to thank you all for watching the first episode of Shop Chronicles here on My Random 603. I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to stop for this week. I do think that we got a lot done. We were able to get this passenger side mirror replaced. We replaced the driver's side door handle after we ripped apart the entire door panel. And we even did a tune-up consisting of changing the air filter, doing a full oil change, and also changing the plugs out. I look forward to making many more of these episodes, and if you have any feedback, put them in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.